Bonjour Paris, uh, nice to be here, nice to be on this event. So this is the tenth year of Kubernetes and I noticed I already, this is my third talk on a, a KubeCon and uh, if I count the zero, it's KubeCon which was a LinuxCon container con. And this is what I'm doing normally. Um, my major topic is Kubernetes security and especially in critical infrastructure. So energy, healthcare, German government, uh, but also traffic. I'm a founder of a um, cloud computing security company. I have several pro bono memberships where I supported even the German IT planning council. And more or less what I did, I applied a DevSecOps and GitOps strategy, which is now being part of the German cloud strategy. Uh, my latest customers, but this is not important. Just one disclaimer before this, as a cloud security uh, architect, I've been involved with the two projects I will present later. This is the open desk project by the German government and as a consultant on, on computer security or Kubernetes security, VNC Lagoon uh, in the aerospace industry. So uh, the history, this is the uh, first thing to notice. There is a promise and I traced it back to 1998, the Linux desktop. <laughs> this is the year of the Linux desktop. I personally um, presented Linux in the, uh, I pitched it in the German Bundestag, so the German parliament in 2001. This shows me how old I am. And as you might have noticed, it did not really take off. The market share jumped to 4%, which is astonishing, and it is more or less uh, that thing which powers Chromebooks. And yeah, but now we have two solutions usable, and if I count Nextcloud and OwnCloud, also we have four solutions which are more or less ready for production as your desktop in a browser. What are the drivers behind this? So the first driver is security. Uh, in Germany and elsewhere, municipalities are going down after ransomware attacks. Ransomware is the uh, um, black plague of our time on, on IT. The last major breach in Germany took down seven cities. Uh, in one of the cities I'm, I have been born. So th this means reduced services, social welfare is under stress. Uh, you cannot do relocation notifications anymore. And for the business, you have to switch back to import export notifications on paper. This was the incident in the south of Westphalia. It's down since November last year, not fully recovered, 70 cities affected. If you see further the drivers uh, at the moment, we see also that the big cloud vendors, whatever they tell you, are not able to guarantee every level of security. It might be okay for your business, for your hotel booking sites, but it is not okay on a governmental or military side. So the last incident is Microsoft and they have um, been visited by a Russian group. They stole the source code. So if you talk about open source and security, yes. Effectively, the Microsoft Windows Azure code now might be open source, at least to the people who want to attack. And uh, what the security communi community talks about is you have the four riders of the apocalypse on your desktop, which is Outlook, Exchange, Active Directory, and Office. It is virtually impossible now for smaller teams to make them secure, and it is not possible to operate them uh, without stress. And uh, this is a part of the movement of Microsoft. They want the users to go into the cloud, but if, you, if they themselves are not able to keep the security level high, we have a problem as a government, or if you have really uh, secure operations on the way. Personally, it's not only Microsoft. I have seen flaws in every cloud, including Google and Amazon. And uh, this is just a matter of how much you have contact with the cloud. If you look into cloud applications, at least 
let's say three months, then it's highly probable that you find a flaw which affects the entire cloud. Another driver, uh, how should I frame this, is more or less haircut-driven sovereignty. Uh, the US Cloud Act allows the US government to visit all the data, even if it's in European data centers. This is not acceptable. Uh, there is a certain fear of the American administration going mad at the end of the year. And as I told you, there is a, some doubt in the security of the hyperscalers. They are doing much things better, but on that scale, uh, we really have a problem with, with our own sovereignty. The problem is that if, let's say, the American NSA goes into the European data, the NSA has also been hacked by the Russian, the Iranian, uh, the North Korean groups, and probably by some others. So this means if the NSA can read your data, more or less everybody can read your data. And uh, digital serenity. This is a CNCF a survey from 2021. Um, you have to build your own competence. You have to build your own cloud. And this is only possible if you use something like Kubernetes. In former times, it was also OpenStack, but OpenStack was limited to a certain amount of customers. There are a lot of companies in Germany who are able to do Kubernetes on scale. Some of them are here, like Edgeless Systems or Kubernetes or Sovereign Cloud Stack, which I've not seen here. So we have the competence. We have the competence in Germany. We have it in France. We have it in Europe. So why not build our own clouds with our own data? Oh, uh, definitely under our control. Um, there's a certain movement at the moment to create a secure stack. Uh, and you might have seen all the talks here about the Kubernetes security, edge security, service mesh, minimal containers, and so on. What you probably did not notice is that there are also other initiatives from the CPU vendors to create secure enclaves on the CPU and even on the GPU level, that you can probably not extract the data if, even if your workload is running in the cloud. This is security um, community says um, we are questioning this. Uh, you have Trusted Boot. Trusted Boot works. Every Chromebook proves that, uh, that Trusted Boot is working. Um, people are telling you that the Linux kernel is secure. You have to trust them. Uh, some people say, on our level, the Linux kernel is not secure enough, so the, we are, they are building a microkernel with automated proofs below the Linux kernel, and then this microkernel is able to be aware of the container workload in the Linux kernel. So the microkernel controls the workload of the Linux kernel and the container workload. This works also with uh, Kubernetes, so they can definitely tell you that it is not only by eBPF impossible to run an unknown workload, it is also possible by a microkernel. They are in the middle of the proof, so the proof is about 100,000 lines of C++ code. This means uh, they are using automated proving systems, and then they can create a microkernel controlling the, micro the, the Linux kernel in a secure way. The other thing is confidential computing. This is also a big buzz at the moment. So you can create a secure version of Kubernetes which relies on the GPU and CPU enclaves. So you have definitely a connection to a CPU. Obviously, you need the hardware vendors in this project. And then you are fine. I already mentioned the Kubernetes layer. There is even, there's much more. And then the final uh, frontier, more or less, is the application security. It does not really uh, make sense to run an insecure application on a secure stack, so we need kind of secure workload. And in our case, we need kind of complex workload, like a desktop. 
If I ask people what is a desktop, I get different answers. And this is a summary of all the answers I've gotten so far. Um, classic desktops, so yeah, it's a Windows. No, it's a Linux. Yeah, which kind of Linux? GNOME, KDE. I personally use i3, uh, but this is um, I'm a minority. In this uh, it, it's definitely something with Office. Um, and you can discuss: is it diagram drawing, mail, calendar, browser, video conference, chatting? Is a wiki part of your desktop? I don't know, project management, some people want that, file sharing, ticketing, search, identity and access management definitely must be involved. You want to control who is chatting with whom. Um, so the desktop suit is not well defined. You have uh, Microsoft Office as a classic um, uh, idea of a desktop, but you also have the open source tools which are now integrated into these uh, cloud native desktops. Sometimes it's getting really complicated because some institutions have documents which must be, comp uh, which must be kept for a hundred years. This means you need archive systems. If you go to the crypto community, not the Bitcoin community, the old fashioned crypto community who is able to uh, sign documents and, and is doing the real research. There is no algorithm at the moment which guarantees you, you, for you that the hash will be stable for 100 years. They give you five years, maybe 10. And this means uh, you have challenges on this desktop in certain institutions where you have to re-sign the documents and prove that it has been re-signed before the algorithm is flawed which you are actually using, which makes it even more complicated. Uh, one example from the German government, they did a release, another release three days ago is OpenDesk. Here you see what's uh, involved in OpenDesk. So you start with, a, um, um, with an operating system by your invention, which is a Debian flavor. Then you have uh, office system, presentation system, can use Collabora here. You have a, uh, like something like Excel, uh, tabel, uh, table calculation. You have something like Nextcloud. You have a project management tool. This is a governmental um, um, project, so they need project management. You have a wiki for documentation. You have some simple crypt pad for exchanging short, uh, short messages. You have a whiteboard, which is effectively based on element. Uh, you have open exchange as a mail server. You have element itself with a Jitsi video client. So this is the definition of a desktop as a German government does it at the moment. And here you see we need open standards. We need everything open. Um, it should be part of the German cloud strategy, which means uh, it must be in Kubernetes. Uh, it must be independent of the operator. You need some security, you have integration. Uh, finally, uh, not at this release, but uh, in, in the end release, it must be usable on mobile uh, devices. Um, it must be inclusive so that every, everybody can use it. Uh, it must be a, a web application. The design must be changeable. It should unite under a single look and feel and it should have something as single sign-on. So here's a link if you want to it. Unfortunately, uh, the German government uh, insists on having the documents in German first. So if you are German, it's no problem. Otherwise, uh, you will understand the concept and have to translate them into your mother language. Uh, this is part of the architectural design on Kubernetes. So this is a typical Kubernetes setup. You have a load balancer at, at, the, at the top Then you have a login. This is more or less uh, done by an ingress. And on the ingress level, you also have something like mod security, which means you have an application gateway inside your ingress layer and you have also 
uh, packet filter, which is a load balancer, and you have internal packet filters, and the security officials, they accepted that we are doing it with some kind of network policies. So the red lines are isolating the, um, the application inside uh, the desktop cluster. This means, for example, if something is hacked, if one of the applications uh, is hacked, then you cannot, if the chat is hacked, you cannot go into the documents. Um, it's all on open code. I have been also working pro bono for open code. This is a, is a German GitLab. So um, this is, cannot compete with GitLab, uh, with GitHub if, uh, on size and scaling. But legally, um, it is now in a, in a, in a control that you have uh, the guarantee that all the applications on open code are complying with German law, which is not the case on GitHub. And this is important for a government that you have, that you imply compliance rule on that level. And this is the outcome of a broader strategy, the Deutsche, uh, the Verwaltungslaut strategy, so the German administration cloud strategy, which is, uh, this was my little contribution, uh, more or less inspired by the CNCF DevSecOps approach. So we just copied the basic ingredients of the DevSecOps approach into this uh, strategy, and this means um, it's a GitOps strategy, it has a lot of security built in, and effectively it's, uh, the base is a DevOps strategy with security built in. Um, this is all on, uh, published on paces by the Federal Ministry of the Interior and Community in Germany. And this means, uh, yeah, it's more or less public. Uh, it's a Creative Commons license and you can use it. The other desktop, which is already in use by some companies who are doing really security stuff, is VNC Lagoon which is also a fully integrated desktop with a different focus. I did the Kubernetes adaptation within six weeks, so uh, together with the team, of course, we, um, they are using hardened container, they are also using this micro-segmentation, network policies, and other things. And the demo, actually, if we look here, the demo is actually uh, this presentation, so I'm presenting out of this uh, cloud and I can uh, show you uh, how it looks like. So it's a little bit fancy. So they also have an adaptable theme. You can you, uh, change it by your company here you have the file applications and you have task manager, you have a mail which is uh, a different mail client, it's Zimbra and you can send mails to this in the browser and this is, I think it's a network here. Okay, it tells me I've opened it elsewhere in another window but this is definitely a one mail application. And I have not so many content here, so I'll just go uh, further um, to compare the both approaches a little bit. Mm, it's a network, it's always a network. Uh, has a little bit different components like Zimbra Mail and own cloud instead of next cloud, which is not a big difference. They are not using open project, but Redmine for ticketing. They are not using Matrix, but XMPP chat. And the biggest asset is they have a search engine based on Solar. Solar is a search engine of Bloomberg, who is uh, giving you all the nice content of uh, the American Stock Exchange and, and all the financial information you want to have. 
And one of the less known uh, approaches is they have Corteza, which is a French company. Um, they have a low code uh, application, so you can click very, with, with very limited knowledge of programming a uh, fancy application in Corteza low code. And they already have a mobile app, which uh, is fully adapting to a mobile environment. So you have definitely uh, the goal which OpenDesk is aiming for end of the year or next year uh, already reached and they can uh, play with it in a way that, you, that they can roll out an uh, application within a few weeks um, which is based on that stack. What are the challenges? The final challenge is always the desktop or the mobile. If you have a bring your own device policy in your company, nobody can help you if the phone or the desktop is not hardened. And so this would be the next step to create some Chromebook-like application for, for the um, German administration where you can have uh, a secure version of a real operating system. Uh, another problem always from a security point of view is the browser. It has more codes than the operating system, frequent updates, and it is virtually impossible to make uh, security audits on a, on a browser system. And for every application, you have to do it on your own. So application by application and also the interplay of the applications must be, uh, must, must be audited. Kubernetes services compared to this is quite easy. We have a standard what we have to do. We need uh, internal isolation. We, have, uh, we need minimal containers. Uh, we have either some network layer like Calico or some uh, service mesh like Istio or Linkerd. So this is pretty standard. Um, nowadays, this was in the beginning of the project, it was, it was more challenges. Uh, what surprised me is effectively mail systems are not cloud native and it is really hard to get a mail system which is cloud native because um, it is based on POSIX storage. It's not 12 factor, it's not scaling horizontally. It wants vertical scaling, give me more memory, give me more resources. And one other problem is if you integrate so many components, they have partially their own integration and you are dismantling the applications and take out the parts uh, which you need for this kind of desktop. Another thing is in this area of the German administration, we are um, just starting with microservices. So you cannot, um, cannot think that any, any uh, microservice language or any cloud native knowledge is already in the, um, in the developer community of these services. And same with security, it's not really uh, known how to secure the system. This was my job and uh, we made a lot of uh, assumptions which then broke some applications because people if, you, uh, if they start developing microservices, they put the entire operating system in a container and then you have to tell them how to get rid of the compon components you don't need. From a Kubernetes point of view, yeah, hardened container images is more or less straightforward. I have uh, on my GitHub repo, I have an example how you harden even an engine X that it is, uh, you can take any engine X with dynamic libraries and throw out everything. So the standard engine X example in Kubernetes is the worst example for beginners of Kubernetes security you can have, but you can do better. Um, micro segmentation is something you need. Um, some operations need an air gapped environment. This means you have a difficulty to bring cloud native applications into an air gapped environment. I also have an example how to do this with a mixture of uh, a Kubernetes cluster running only Harbor and Argo CD and kind of Git, small Git installation that you have one cluster per security zone 
that you can pull it into an air-gapped environment through um, standard tools of Kubernetes. Also, a thing is the existing network segmentation. People think we have network segmentation, therefore we are secure. And finally, yes, uh, if you look into it, this is not the case. Um, another challenge, this is was the German army paid uh, a certain version of element that they included um, MLS, so the message layer security standard. And uh, they had their own crypto which is a national crypto standard. So they needed an Apache license and they are breeding their own version of uh, Matrix with the existing crypto algorithms and a top layer with their own standards. So this um, all together can give you a high level of isolation and it can be run in secured environments. And it can be used for confidential and secret documents. If you see this side by side, so the left side is open desk and the right side is uh, VNC Lagoon. So you have, you see, this is more appealing. This is more neutral, let's uh, to say it. So um, we will see how both projects will evolve in the future. Maybe they will uh, join somehow, maybe because this is definitely so the, uh, interoperability of all the components in VNC, VNC Lagoon is very high. So this is more or less whatever you want to do on a very uh, administration-like desktop. This is more fancy. Um, so uh, yeah, next things, for example, integrate draw IO, have a full integration layer that you can simply say fire up a chat with these persons, fire up a video conference with these persons. This will uh, be controlled by an AP guy, Gateway Angela. And uh, what's already going on is the integration of immutable archive systems. And uh, there is an example where you have the integration of an archive systems into VNC Lagoon, where you have uh, one million signed documents per day. This is a bigger system. Challenges, uh, yeah. When Google gave away Kubernetes, this was not a big deal for Google. But if you have all the small and medium companies you have seen here, um, these are more or less like crown jewels. They have real assets and they have prob problems if some big companies getting free ride off on that. So um, all the companies have some hidden secrets where you get a professional version which scales better just to keep the big free riders out. We have seen the same problem with uh, databases in the cloud. So this uh, led to a um, clash with, with the licensing. Um, this is this SSPL versus AGPL problem. AGPL should be sufficient because all the big companies hate AGPL. So the first thing you should think about is uh, if you want to negotiate, put your code like Element does under the AJPL, then you get the free riders out, but they can negotiate if you, if you can make them an offer by contract, then you can go back to the Apache license or to another license. What I want to kick off in the near future is to have something like a cloud native desktop foundation under the umbrella of uh, the Linux and the CNCF. Uh, we are on common ground, can develop and in integrate components in a cloud based desktop. And that's basically it. And I'm still around until Friday. If you have questions, ask me now. Thank you for coming. <laughs>